Hi, I'm Rick, and in a minute you're going to meet Marie. We are both part of the Andover Baptist Church community, and this week we are going to be spending some time each day talking about well-being. So we'll be looking at what it is, why we as Christians believe our well-being is so important to God, and how we can work on our own well-being with him. So what is well-being? There is a massive amount of chatter at the moment re-well-being and that is unsurprising seeing the pandemic that we've all been through. However, it's not new at all. Just look at the meaning of the Hebrew word shalom, meaning peace, harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare and tranquility. It's always been around, you see, but what we're doing is just bringing more awareness to it. So what is the definition of well-being? Well, let's have a little look at what the Bible, uh, the dictionary says. Well-being can be defined as the state of being comfortable, healthy or happy. This may include a combination of feeling physically well, having a support network of family, friends or colleagues, feeling mentally capable to face life's challenges, eating and drinking within a healthy range and having a sense of purpose in life. Well-being is specific to each individual and what makes you feel good may be different from other people. So here's Marie. Thank you, Rick. So how can we be certain that God cares for our well-being? We can look to the Old Testament part of the Bible for some answers to that question. The question of what well-being is and why it's important to God. Let's look at the story of the prophet Elijah. Elijah was a man with extraordinary ability. He was called a prophet because he received messages directly from God and then he went to tell other people about them and what they should do in response. His story is documented in the Old Testament books of Kings 1 and 2, which as I've said are both in the Old Testament part of the Bible. Now Elijah was born around 2,900 years ago and he lived at a time when there was a lot of upheaval and unrest. That part of Israel had had six kings in just 58 years. He was described as a superhero because he spoke and acted in miraculous ways and it's clear when you read his story that he did have an amazing connection with God. However, at one point in his life Elijah had what we would nowadays call a breakdown. After repeated confrontations with the king and his wife he fled to the desert in fear for his life. He was physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually exhausted. And in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, verse 4, we hear that he prays to the Lord. Lord, I've had enough. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors who've already died. So what happened then? The next part of the book tells us how the Lord sent an angel to deal with Elijah's physical needs. The need for sleep and the need for food. And then he followed that with some spectacular audiovisual displays. And only then did God come and speak to him. He didn't talk to him and directly until the more urgent well-being needs had been taken care of. And the way in which God spoke to Elijah tells us a lot too. He whispered, he was gentle, and he dealt with Elijah taking into account the circumstances he was in at the time. He knew exactly how Elijah was feeling, but he asked him to tell him anyway. And when Elijah did tell him, the Lord made it clear he still had a plan for him and there was a purpose and a meaning to his life. Back to you, Rick. Thanks, Marie. What we both love about Elijah's story is that we can see God responding to the most pressing well-being need before he moved to the other needs. Only when Elijah was physically strong was he able to hear, listen and respond to God. God knew Elijah wouldn't be able to move forward with the things he wanted to do, while some aspects of his life were creating obstacles to move forward. The story paints an incredibly powerful picture. We are beautifully complex and our well-being matters intensely to God. Everything that makes us who we are is important. We read elsewhere in the Old Testament part of the Bible that God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Wow. A plan to give us hope and a future. 
Join us over the next few days as we talk about how by focusing on our relationship with God and allowing him to direct our thinking and actions, we can find a freedom to step into the plans he has for each one of us. Today's song choice is Who You Say I Am by the Hillsong Worship. The song talks about being free once we really know we are children of God. One of my favourite parts of the song says, I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we are chosen by you and that you have a unique plan and purpose for each one of us. Please help us to take comfort in the fact that our identity is shaped only by you and know that you are for us. Help us to be open to what you might have to say to us this week about our well-being. Thank you so much for listening. And tomorrow I'll be with you talking about mindfulness. And then Marie will be with you on day three. Bye. <music>